Hi guys, uh, let's start with the obvious question. Uh, can you give me the high, the high speed version of uh, Windows Server 2012? What's new? Windows Server 2012 is about providing our customers the best and most definitive cloud OS. It's about providing a consistent cloud OS, whether you want to run that on-premises, whether you want to run that through a service provider, or whether you want to take advantage of Microsoft's public cloud offerings through Azure. At a very high level, that's kind of how we think about Server 2012. The, uh, the strap line for the launch that I've seen is cloud optimizer IT. Can you, um, can you give me your take on how that, how that works in practice for, for the average client, if there is such a thing? Well, I think, uh, you know, yeah, is there an average? <laughs> That's actually a great point. You know, we look at the opportunity around cloud computing today and realize that no two customers are in the exact same point. And we don't want to force a pace at which each of our customers goes to the cloud. So one of the, the key features in how we designed not just Windows Server 2012, but really our entire cloud OS platform, which is what I think you're referring to, is to provide for our customers the opportunity to get to the cloud on their own pace, whether that's on-premises in their own data center, uh, whether it's through their service provider data, data center, or through our own with Windows Azure. So making sure there's consistency amongst how they build uh, their apps, how they manage their apps across all those is a, is a very key part of what we're launching here today. And so it's not, not merely cloud washing uh, <laughs> in how we talk about it. So who do you see using Windows Server 2012? Is this, is this going after the, um, the public cloud or are you still focusing very much on private and hybrid, hybrid offerings? You know, really Windows Server 2012 is about customers of all sizes and all segments. In fact, one of the very first things that we did before we did any development on Server 2012 was we spent about a year in what we call a pre-planning process and we spoke to literally customers all around the world UK, Europe, Asia Pacific, and all segments, small, medium, large, and a variety of different verticals, finance, government, healthcare. And we really wanted to understand all of the different challenges that our customers face and how they want to adopt cloud services and, and deploy it, whether it's on-premises, uh, through our cloud services, through a service provider. And then we decided to ba basically focus all of our energies to that one common goal. And if you look across the entire release of Server 2012, you'll see that it's really across all of those capabilities. So just one example is management. You know, we have to be able to deliver a management solution that scales at all different types of, 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 uh, of customer. For example, there may be a customer that is a small shop that literally has a single server. We need to be able to provide a management interface that scales and can work on a single server. So someone logs in and actually you know, manages their server on the box and has an easy to use, very um, easy experience managing that single server. When you move to a, a mid-sized customer, someone that may have you know, maybe a dozen or a couple dozen servers, they still want to be able to manage it. They want to do multi-machine management and do it from that single unified interface. Then, of course, you start to talk about really large data centers and enterprise customers that have literally hundreds or thousands or even tens or hundreds of thousands of servers. We're talking massive scale here. In that case, you're not going to go to a single server. You're not going to manage it at the box. You're going to do all of this remotely. You're going to do all of it through automation. You want to remove human error as a component to the equation. And so for that, for server, it means we have to provide a consistent management experience that works all across those. So that's just one way that we've tackled looking at how the cloud OS has to scale in terms of a management paradigm. How do you um, see the uh, Windows, Windows Server 2012 stacking up against some of the other players in the market at the moment? The, uh, the, the, other, the other big names in the, kind of the, in, the, in the cloud environment. Mm -hmm. So this is an area, again, we, we very much focused on both uh, understanding what our customers' needs are and interoperability is a key part of that. So, for example, when you look at, um, when you look at for example, making sure that we provide the best cloud OS, Certainly Windows is a first class citizen, but guess what? That also includes other operating systems like Linux. Um, we have a team at Microsoft that's devoted to interoperability. In fact, if you look at Windows Azure right now, you can create virtual machines that, lo and behold, not only do they have Windows Server and Windows and SQL Server and BizTalk, but they've got uh, CentOS Linux, they've got OpenSUSE, they've got SUSE Linux Server. And in fact, on, in terms of building your own private cloud, we actually have a team that's developed the drivers that are incorporated into the Linux kernel. These are drivers that are available as part of the Linux kernel. These are GPL v2 code. And so, for example, if you download the latest version of Ubuntu today, or even just yesterday, Red Hat announced that with their 5.9 release of their, their, their beta, um, the Linux drivers for Hyper-V are actually in the, in the distri distribution. So you install it on Hyper-V, and guess what? It just works out of the box. 
And so really, again, it comes back to providing our customers a great cloud OS, a great experience, giving them best interoperability. And then when it comes to management, System Center is a great way to manage not only the hypervisor layer, not only the, you know, the application layer, but to manage it as a service and manage it end-to-end. -end. And you want to manage it both, again, on-premises as well as through a service provider and as well as Azure. And so with System Center, again, we think we provide a really broad management solution that works across uh, the entire cloud OS. How are, you, how are you guys taking, taking on the public cloud? Um, Microsoft is, is traditionally very strong in the private and the hybrid sectors. You've got lots of great big clients running their own private clouds. But the, in, in the public cloud, perhaps you're not the biggest name. How are you, how are you addressing that? Well, I think obviously um, Windows Azure has been just an amazing journey for us. And uh, we are incredibly uh, excited about not only what we're delivering today, but what we're delivering in, in the future. We're seeing more and more clients who are, you know, one, you know, Microsoft generation uh, of private cloud customers that are really interested in what they can do by adding certain workloads uh, in Windows Azure. We had a great Meet Windows Azure uh, moment in the spring of last year where you're seeing not only the existing kind of Microsoft developers that have been developing on .NET for years, but new developers, next-gen developers, developers that don't dress like the average Microsoft employee, uh, showing up and really amazed by what's going on. So we've seen amazing growth, and I'm sure that Jeff actually has some more specifics, but uh, but we're very bullish about the about where we're at and where we're going. But we're particularly bullish about the fact that we're not looking at it as an isolated incidence with our with our public cloud. We truly see uh, the cloud as not as being across um, you know both private, hybrid, and uh, and public cloud, and that people are going to want to move in and out of that uh, in a pretty flexible manner. And a lot of the features of Windows Server 2012 that we're delivering today, as well as what we talk about with Azure and System Center, provide provide for the ability for our customers to do that. Well, in addition, though, we also look at the, the, the public cloud very broadly. It's not just infrastructure as a service. You know, if I want to go out and, and go get a virtual machine, there are a number of hosting providers, a number of solutions out there like AWS, give me a VM. But there's also much more than that. There's platform as a service and software as a service. When you look at software as a service, Office 365 is growing in huge leaps and bounds right now. So actually, you know, we're very bullish because we're seeing that taking off in a very big way. When you look at platform as a service and what we're doing with Azure, I'll be honest with you, I think this is an area where we, I think we, we, we kind of came out, we actually went, were ahead of the industry. A lot of people looked at Azure and platform as a service, and for a lot of people, they didn't immediately grok or understand what this really meant. But for those people, those early adopters that have taken a look at what Azure can develop and what Azure can bring to market, it has tremendous value. If you're developing a new application, you know, platform as a service is the way to do it because guess what? You can deploy it. You can, ha you can use your MSDN account, develop an application on Windows Azure, deploy it on, on, on Azure, and guess what? When you're ready to go public with it, turn the crank, make sure that, you know, make sure this thing goes public. Um, and if I want to deploy it into Europe, into Asia, into North America, into South America, it's ready to go. And you know what? If it's successful and it continues to grow, fantastic. And if you decide, you know what? This didn't work out. You know what? You can always just... I can turn it right back off. Or if I need to deploy, change, and elastically grow and scale, Azure's ready to do it right now. So, you know, again, we look at it very broadly. The public cloud is more than infrastructure as a service, infrastructure, software, and um, um, platform as a service. You mentioned um, briefly your, your developers, and uh, I, I wanted to ask, what, what are you guys doing to kind of um, attract developers to the Windows Server 2012 platform? Are you, are you focusing very much on your existing core of, of guys and girls who know what they know the Microsoft systems all in, inside out or are you kind of trying to attract some non Microsoft developers as well to kind of build apps for you oh it's it's definitely both so first of all if you know how to write .net if you know how to write visual studio if you know our tools you're set and ready to go in fact we made some huge investments we love .net we've made some huge investments in the .net 4 or 5 framework it works great but at the same time, we totally understand the world isn't .NET only. People want to run Java. They want to run Ruby. They want to run PHP. Go right ahead. Okay, we've made a huge investment in making sure not only do these run, these run exceptionally well on Server 2012. So the answer is both. What is the value for a business at this stage um, to switch to Windows Server 2012 when the, the, they, may, they may already have a toe in the cloud 
they might be trying out a little bit, you know, going one step beyond virtualization. Why would they necessarily upgrade rather than just kind of trying to maybe spread out a little bit in what they're already doing? Well, there's, there's a number of, of reasons for that. Number one is about flexibility and choice. When we, come, when we talk about the cloud OS, kind of think of it as three legs to a stool. You know, there's the, I'm going to run things on premises, and generally it's about, I want to control some, some IP, control some data, but I also want to take advantage of pooling those resources and using those resources as efficiently as possible. If I want to move to a service provider, I want to be able to get additional reach or additional customization that a provider can provide me, and maybe I even have a great relationship with one of those hosting providers. When you move to the public cloud with Microsoft, you get global scale the fact that you can deploy something and guess what, it can be available worldwide. So, you know, there's a lot of unique advantages and again, it's, it's about providing those all together that gives you that unique solution that we have with the Cloud OS. And to be honest, I think, uh, you know, obviously anytime you come out with new technology, uh, there's usually some delay in, in deployment. And one of the surprising things from the business side that I've seen, um, even pre-release, is you know customers are clamoring uh, to get Windows Server 2012 of all things, and they are actually saying, "Hey, even though we've just we've just begun deployment on our our 2003 uh, infrastructure, 2008, we absolutely we're gonna we're gonna jump straight ahead because whether it's the scalability, whether it's some of the storage features, whether it's some of the truly hybrid cloud features that come with Windows Server 2012." Uh, they're jumping right on it. We're seeing the same advancements uh, from customers that may be on our key competitors' platforms, and they're saying, hey, you know what, I, I need to deploy my next workload, and I'm going to try it on Windows Server 2012, and that's exactly what we want them to do because we're very confident based on all the road testing we've done on, uh, on the ability for that workload to be incredibly successful on Windows Server 2012. Well, and there are key features in Server 2012 that are designed to help enable this. So, for example, a big one is software-defined networking. So, for example, if I am using an a service provider and I want to take my virtual machine and I want to take my infrastructure and extend my data center to a service provider, I want to be able to take that network with me. Okay, I actually want to be able to extend my, my network uh, reach into the cloud. And to do that, you need a way to be able to virtualize the network and do exactly that. That capability is simply built into Server 2012. So that allows me to, provides me a number of things. Number one, um, virtual, my, my workloads that we're running on premise, I don't need to re-IP them to move to a workload. I can have you know, a workload on premise that's using 10.0.0.1, move it to my hosting provider, and it still uses that same exact IP address. That's really important for customers because that server has you know, real semantic meaning to that IP address. In addition, it also gives you VM portability. So we can now live migrate virtual machines across physical subnets, which is something, you know, by definition, moving across physical subnet means you're going to lose connectivity. Now we can do that with, with both software-defined networking and new features like shared nothing live migration. So these are, you know, key capabilities that we architected and developed into this release to enable the cloud OS. I wanted to also ask you briefly about the consumerization of IT. Um, and how, how is, how, do, you, do you guys find that that's a kind of a, a big driver for cloud deployments? Do you see, do you see it being, a, um, or, or is it the other way around that the cloud is enabling the consumerization of IT? Which way around do you guys well, see it? Well, you know, the consumerization of IT is, is it's very much a top of mind question mm. because folks do want to be able to use whatever device they're most comfortable with. And whether it's a tablet or a phone or whatever, you know, IT and, you know, CIOs we talk to, the, you know, they look at this as it's an interesting challenge. On the one hand, they want to be the nice guys and let people bring in their, you know, their tablets from home. But at the same time, they also have to be able to protect their businesses and make sure that, you know, they're not inadvertently creating holes in their network um, and, and creating holes in their security um, by just letting people bring in random devices. Uh, for example, I, I spoke to someone recently who said, you know, they've been letting people bring in their devices and their tablets and letting them access corporate, and he just found out that some of the guys in his IT have been buying inexpensive tablets and flashing them with their own custom ROMs, and he was like realizing, so what's the security implication of that? And I was like, I don't know, and I, I, I think that's something you need to think about. And so being able to take some policy and being able to apply policy, so for example, say, look, you know, at the very minimum, number one, everything has to have a PIN. You know, you don't want people to lose their phone that has their corporate email or their tablet with their corporate email that literally I can just swipe and get in and get access to it. Uh, maybe you want to set in policy and say, look, yes, you can bring in your device, but it has to have this version of, you know, the OS and it can't have, you know, flashed versions and things like that. So there's this, you know, fine policy you need to be able to drive there. So you want to be able to manage it. 
The other thing is we also want to put policy in place and, and, and capabilities in place to help protect their data. So things like file classification. So for example, if I want to create you know, an Excel spreadsheet or a Word document or something that has you know, PCI, payment card information data in it, like credit card information or billing information, when I put that up in a file server, wouldn't it be great if the file server scanned the file, found this information, and said, you know what, this needs to be encry immediately encrypted? That's the kind of thing that we actually put in the server 2012. We've also made it extensible because we know that you know, things vary by country, by geography, and by, you know, by the, the, the laws in different countries. So, for example, in, 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 I, could, I could create my own policies that says any file created by director level or above is automatically encrypted. And so I can apply my own policy. And, of course, if I have to deal with HIPAA or Sarbanes-Oxley or any of the other um, laws that pertain to the ge geography, you can apply those in an extensible framework in Server 2012. So when it comes to Hyper-V, you know, look at it this way. There's a number of key capabilities we've included in the box. Um, and we think of virtualization and we think about the Server 2012 release far more than just the hypervisor. As someone who spent a lot of years and many releases working on the hypervisor, I love and know the value of the hypervisor, but it's more than that. Server 2012 is not only virtual machine virtualization, but it's network virtualization. So software-defined networking, something that's been the big buzz for the last six to ten months, it's not something we had to go out and spend a billion dollars to go buy another company. We actually innovated it and put it in the operating system. And the reason why we did this is because we run our own services. We run our own data centers. We have over 200 services that are global that we run ourselves, whether it's Azure, whether it's Office 365, whether it's Hotmail. We know that the pain of dealing with VLANs and network complexity is a real challenge for our customers. So we decided to build that capability into the platform with network virtualization. In addition, we've also included some major advancements in storage, whether it's file-based storage or block-based storage. And we've also made some huge advancements, for example, with storage virtualization. So now we have um, storage spaces, which allows you to take a whole bunch of direct attached storage, pool it together, and then dice it and slice it and present that and use the file server to provide it as shared storage. So, you know, it's really far more than just the virtualization layer. Um, automation, manageability, scale, and then of course Hyper-V Replica is something that is really something that our customers are very excited about. The fact that you can replicate virtual machines using just software um, from one location to another with the built-in capabilities of Replica is for customers a huge win because now they can actually protect their data. For our partners and service providers, they can now set up the ability to be replication sites for their customers with very little in terms of an investment other than setting up a server and enabling Hyper-V Replica. So again, we think about it much more broadly and more, much more deeply, and we know that our customers are very excited with Server 2012. Cool.